you know, that kind of horrendous, horrendous temperatures. Yeah, and no, no nor'easter to cool them down. Yeah. Yeah, not very pleasant. So, so George, that's, that's pretty well the State Bank. What, tell us about the reaction to the State Bank. What did people say about the garden, level seven? Was there comments? I remember there were comments on the feed up to it, the lead up to it, like the black bathroom. How did people... I mean, there, there, there were big comments. There were big comments at the cost of it. And then the bank did an assessment of the cost of the building. Mm -hmm. And what the whole investment of the building was, and then what portion of level 35, 36 was in terms of the whole building, and it became a kind of minuscule amount, mm -hmm. which they used as that kind of, you know, brush, brush it off as, in a, you know, an inappropriate criticism mm -hmm. in terms mm -hmm. of what they were spending, mm -hmm. because, you know, there was, Heavy criticism about you know this Valhalla, uh, mm. the, the Nick Whitlam was building for himself. So the, of course, you know because of his background in labour affiliations, the conservative press mm. were quite vicious. Mm. Mm. And look, they followed they followed that through for the rest of his career. Is that right? Uh, for yeah. the state bank. Or just no, for Nick Whitlam. Yeah, right. Yeah, you know, the, you know, the, the damage they did when he was with NRMA yeah, in terms yeah. of <coughs> uh, trying to destroy him. Yes. It was, you know, just a campaign. You know, yeah. a campaign. Yeah. Um, it's funny, they, le they left his elder brother, Tony, alone. Yes but just picked on Nick all the way yeah. through. Did Nick have a, a, a bigger public profile? I don't, yeah. I don't know, the, that's yeah. why. Yeah. 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 yeah, Tony sort of kept you know, very quiet. Oh, he had the wines. Didn't he make wines, Tony Whitlam? No, no, he no, make no wines? He was a barrister. Barrister, okay, yeah. 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 And then, and then... Um, um, uh, and then, I mean, look, there were, then there were articles in the press, you know, there was that one. Hey, De hey, Beck did one article, and someone else. You see, I've got all. I mean, yes. well, that's all back then. Yeah. But someone else did another one. You know, would defend and attack yes, yes. between the um, thing, and then eventually it calmed down. Mm. Um, in fact. The reception of the people who actually went there was always positive. Yes, yes, yeah, yes. And yeah. The, yeah, there was a big difference between those who had heard about yes. it and those who had experienced it. Yes, yes. Yeah. I think Nor I remember early on in that Institute of Architects article, Norman Day was talking about it. I think unseen. I don't think it was that complimentary. It was sort of it wasn't that complimentary, but. I remember going there with Haig Beck, and Haig, I remember you couldn't go that day, so he said, Sam, could you meet this guy called Haig Beck? And I said, who is he? I was sorry, what was... <coughs> when, he, when he first came here, yeah. Haig arrived, and for some reason you couldn't go there, so you said, Sam, could you show him through it? So he had his little bow tie on, and he came in, and everywhere we went in the building, he understood it. So I'd start, by, I'd start by saying the reference to this is, and he'd say, da 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 da, this, yes, I can see that. He fully understood it and appreciated it. He, he, there was a smile ah. on his face, he really got it. Do you know what I mean? Because yeah. like architecture, you can read it, he could read it, you know, yeah. every single word in it. So it was a great pleasure to take him through. And I'm glad you couldn't make it that day because I enjoyed <laughs> just seeing, you know, seeing what he had to say about yeah. it. So, um, yeah. And then he wrote that, he wrote a very good article on it. Like, uh, yes, you know, he was terribly positive. Yes. It was, you know, fantastic. Yes, yes. Yeah. Um, okay, and then, and then um, uh, over the years, did it change at all? Not much. Uh, the only thing that I knew changed was when John O'Neill moved 
into what was Nick Whitlam's office. Yeah. He wanted a big table. In his office? For his office. So we designed this oh, rather yeah. elaborate inlaid table, yeah. you know, two and a half meters by a meter, yeah. rather than that pedestal yeah. desk that Nick had. Yeah. And this is a type of thing to sit at or to meet at? No, no, no this is at sit at. So, yeah. you know, <coughs> it was more like a def defensive desk that he sat on one side and yeah. people sat on the yeah. other side, yeah. as opposed to the democratic yeah. table that Nick had. Yes. Totally different. Different philosophies. Philosophy. Isn't it? Yeah. But if I think, if you think of the like the American, I mean, I guess I I see American modernism through its movies, and if I think of the big, the the director with the big table, the window behind, and the 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 landscape mm -hmm. in New York, it's all about the fensibility because. And the chair, the chair, the visitors' chair is opposite a lower. Yes. 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 And also having the light behind, behind you can't trees. see that person and he can see you, so it's a sort of power, whereas Nick's turned that around, interestingly. Quite different, yeah. Well, we turned it around for it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was opposed to, you know, when um, I did the uh, Bank of New South Wales, Rob Norman's, all of the, the directors all had their backs to the window. Mm. Mm. Rob Norman did, his deputy mm. did, and all the the general managers, they all had that same thing. Yeah. Uh, their backs to the window. Bank. Yeah. Bank of New South Wales, not Westpac that was after this? That was your original Bank of New South Wales? Which then the became Westpac. One. Yes, but the original one that you came to Australia for. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yes, interesting. And then in, in the State Bank, nobody had their back. They were always side on, weren't they? All side on. Yeah. Which is... Which is um, Kind of democratic in some ways because if I'm sitting here, I can see the view, I can see the door. Yep. So you, you can, whereas if your back's to the view, you can't see the view, but you can see people coming in. Coming in. And then, and then what you did in the and state. It was person at their, at their desk table, visitors, door, view, we, yes. sitting area. Yes, yes. And so when you greeted someone, you had the choice of taking them to the sitting area yes. or to the desk. Yes, yes, yes. And then they could equally enjoy the view as well. Yes. Yeah. As opposed to it being being uh, sort of dictated about. Yes. Okay. And then and then George, um, um, were there any other comments on Level Seven Garden? I guess it's not many people see it. No, people only see it from above. Yeah. Um, I mean, really, the only comment I had from that one friend who's yes, saying, yes. are you building a sort of Hindu garden or yes. a temple or something like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then, and then so, so if those were the only changes, it kept going. And then eventually it was, it was kept yes. level 35 yes. was completely um, level 35 and 6, I believe. I, th I thought it was one after the other. I think it's both of them, yeah, because I know right. the boardroom has been destroyed. Yes. All of the art and carpets and tapestries are in storage somewhere. Yes. Um, I was just talking about them the other day with um, Andrew Shapiro, yes. who said, you, you know, uh, so there's somewhere it's very interesting, but when I was on a committee for government house here to furnish oh, yes. to furnish a future um, and that we were talking about you know putting some oil art or something in the dining room and so we got the tapestries oh, the boardroom brought over oh fantastic and one of the young ladies on the committee said oh we can't have them they're too corporate and I said, well, what do you think the dining room of government house is? <laughs> yes, 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 yes. It's not, yes, yeah. you know, that is not a domestic. <laughs> yes. I mean, it's a workroom. Yeah, but I also thought that those, those tapestries 
are almost bringing something not corporate into a corporate dining, a corporate boardroom. So I wouldn't. That's what they, it. Softened it up. The bay actually, they looked fantastic. Yeah. Only to alas, they were too, too strong and too contemporary for this last. Yes. Right. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the committee's just, interesting. Yeah. <laughs> the um, George, the um, how did you find out that the state bank was being demolished? Did you find out before it was happening or after? How did you know? Um, a couple of months after I was rung by Fisher, the Alec Fisher, Alec Fisher, oh, okay. yeah, who said, "Did I know about it?" Yes, and I I didn't know about it, and I rang Nick. Yep, and told he didn't know. About oh wow! It. Yep, and so he was shocked. Hmm. Hmm. This is a bit of a moral rights issue there, isn't there? Yeah. You weren't informed. You know, the moral rights, you've got to be given the right to photograph it before they can pull it down or you can give people help. Well, I mean, look, it has been, has been photographed. Yeah, I know. <coughs> under the law, they've got to tell you. But anyway, yeah. that's, it's all gone. So, so you heard about it. And then what, what was your reaction? What was Nick's reaction? I was kind of appalled mm. and saddened. Um, And kind of realized that there was absolutely, since it was you know, a commercial interior, mm. there was actually nothing one could do about it. Yes. And you know, realistically, the people who bought the building had no use for the, that fit out yes. on those two floors. Yes. <coughs> I know Glenn Merker was horrified mm. and said that it should have been kept. Mm. <sighs> Except, what would someone do with it? Purpose made. Realistically. Yes. Um, it was you know, designed for a specific program for a specific client. Yes. And others don't necessarily have that yes. requirement. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And had, had the state bank moved in? Had the state bank moved out, which then rendered it obsolete, so somebody else could use it? Or did they refit well, it, it for themselves? Um, um, I think those two floors have let. Oh, they were? Oh, uh, have been let. Oh, okay. As typical office yes. floors or someone else's fit out. Yes. Because they're quite prime yes. locations with yes. the, <coughs> you know, the full height windows. Yes. They're the only two floors. Yes. That's right, yes. With those windows in yes. the building. Yeah. And so they're quite quite special, yes. and they could, I assume, command a very handsome rent. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the executive then would have gone somewhere else to rent that out. Had, well, had all the bank gone? And it's now, it's now colonial, whatever it is. Yes. And I'm quite sure the whole structure of the bank in that building has been completely rearranged. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <coughs> I remember. I, I think I remember Davina too was um, saying it should never been pulled out, or she wrote an article on it, just saying it was an important interior. I think she was involved as well. And I think, I think I remember Peter Stronach expressing an opinion that it shouldn't have been pulled out. Peter sure did. Chris France, from memory, wrote a rather um, strong letter to the Sydney Morning Herald. Yeah. Um, and there was a few, a lot of, there was criticism from some people about mm. it. Mm. But, Not know, much you can do. Tough no. titty kind no. of thing. And the criticism probably came four months after it had been done. Yes. It was a kind of vandalism. And, you know, at the same time, the, you know, that boardroom table what would someone have done with it? Exactly, yes. And I think they had a price of X thousand dollars to move it, get it craned off, and they got a price for half of X to chop in half Essentially, yeah. and get rid of it. You'd have to pull the facade off to do it, wouldn't you? Pull it out, wouldn't you? Hmm? You'd have to pull the facade off to get it out. Yeah, and yeah. crane it out. Yeah. That kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
not difficult. Yeah. Um, but just, you know, cost money. And then what is someone going to do with it? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where all the furniture has gone, um, and the, I believe the rugs and the art, a lot of it is in storage somewhere. Look, there was a time when, you know, we had done, the, when we had done the offices for the Bank of New South Wales, in, there were maybe 16, 18 Barcelona chairs throughout the two floors. Mm. Yeah, yeah, perhaps. Um, the new general manager found them uncomfortable and he said, they hurt my kidneys. So they were all sold. And I think someone bought all of them for maybe five or six hundred dollars each. Yes, yes. You know, and all these Barcelona chairs in impeccable condition. Yes, yes. You know, yes. You know they've done, you know, they were all done in stainless, stainless steel. I've got a, I've got a friend who does um, Herman Miller workstations and he said he's amazed at how many how much beautiful furniture just goes and it's almost like he you know they say can you just get rid of this stuff too yeah. and people just don't see the value they're probably it's probably part of their business plan that's been paid off we really yeah, don't care. and this yeah. beautiful stuff just goes so he can just take it it's amazing what's just yeah just you know, when, yeah, when, when Macquarie Bank were dis dismantling the offices that we designed yes. with um, Alan Jack and Cotier and there were uh, you know, the, um, those little big leather cab chair, the lounge version of the cab chair. Mm. Stronach and Peter Stronach and, and Tim Allison got them for 200 bucks a chair or something <laughs> like that. They ate, it, they ate of them from that thing. And Ralph got a Saarinen table yes. for $200. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah, yeah, that kind yeah, of stuff. Yeah, I mean, the, the nice lady who was organising it rang up and said, look, do you need anything? Yes, yes. And she said, make an offer. Yes. Be in the right place at the right time. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. I'll ask, um, a good friend of mine is a girl called Annette Larkin, who used to work for Christie's. Now she works for herself. And she's in charge of the State Bank Art Collection. She used to work for Eileen Shannon. And she's apparently, or she's valued it. I'll ask her what she knows about what's there, because I know. Oh, okay. I know a while ago she said she'd been there. This was years ago, and I didn't tell. Her. I'll just ask her what what she knows where the where the where the collection's gone, because oh. they've got a pretty amazing collection, haven't they? Oh, it was terrific. Yeah. What what Eileen Shannon had put together yes. was really quite wonderful. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And you wonder what it, you know, how much value, how much that would have increased in value, you know, the bank's got a few jazz I would think enormously. Yeah, I would too. And, um, look, there's two tapestries, um, 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 when our dear friend in Victoria Tapestry Works, uh, Antonia Sands, Antonia yes. said she wants to do that exhibition yes. of collected things from that the Victoria Tapestry Works have done, she would very much like to include those yes. two tapestries in that exhibition. Yes. Perfect reason. Exactly, yeah. yes, yes. They're gorgeous. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll just stop that and start it again. <laughs>